I, uh, I'm, I was diagnosed with muscular dystrophy, uh, Duchenne's muscular dystrophy when I was five years old. And, um, you know, it kind of hit me hard there for a while. And then I, 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 start, I started feeling sorry for myself. But then the Lord came to me and he said, why are you feeling sorry for yourself? You know, you can't fix your situation, but you can make it better by being positive and not whining and not, not letting that get the best of you and using that disability to uh, help you uh, with opportunity uh, and the opportunity to help and inspire people and uh, teach youth and just do some of God's work through me. And, uh, you know, I think showing that side of me, you know, not getting down on myself, not whining, not being upset, uh, not feeling sorry for myself. I think it goes a lot with, uh, goes a lot, does a lot for the kids and uh, teaches them, you know, I may not be in a good situation, but God put me in this situation for another opportunity. And that opportunity may help me in life, may help other people in life, may even save some lives. And I think that right there really, uh, I think that's my duty and I think that's what I need to do here in SOC. So. talk about the because you never hear him talk about he would talk a little bit about the rough times but let me tell you the whole time we was there I kept waiting I said well, you know just him and I one-on-one -on -one, Josh is gonna really let me find out how Josh really feels some of this has got to be a front but you know Josh would say I can't tell you that I don't have ups and downs I do just like anybody else but he said you know the blessings that I have had from being able to go around, he said, I never could have, I never would have made impacts in lives like I have now. Yeah. So God has had a great plan for me. He said, my plan just happens to be a little shorter than yours. That's what he told me. Yeah. And, and it just, you know, as you, as you fell asleep that night, you just knew that, man, you know, I, I may live to be 80. Josh may live another year. Yeah. But Josh has made just as much impact as Pete Busby will ever make. Yeah, with sure. who he is. Yeah. To see guys that will go out and unk, give unselfishly like that, it just is amazing that you have people that have served the Lord like that. And I'll be honest with you guys, before I got involved with SOC, I wasn't that guy. I wasn't that person. No, you know no, what I mean? I, I've learned so much through this organization and, and what it is to, to walk with Christ and how you how that growth doesn't only help SOC, but it helps Andy, which in turn helps my family. You know, and that's that's what it's doing too. It's also building men up to to know how to mentor their own kids. Because there was times raising my own child that, you know, Gage, I was struggling with. Man, how do I deal with this kid? Golly, I don't know how to do this deal. You know, and so getting with other kids and seeing, hey, they got similar problems. You know what I mean? It's helped me mentor my own child and my own children. You know, he knows his role is as you know as he's gotten older at you know 14, 15 years old. Now he knows he's going on these as a mentor. He's going to help clean, he's going to help, and he's been used as a resource that God's using him going, hey, who, who needs it on this hunt? Uh, if you would, Andy, talk about um, David Marks and yeah. how just at that gas station, yeah. how God worked putting everyone together. And I think, was that your first hunt, Joe, uh -huh. that went with me? Yeah, it was Joe's first hunt, and we had, uh, it was in San Saba, we had a meeting that night on Saturday night about really pushing this thing, because up until that point, we had done four or five hunts a year, and we we get some momentum and then kind of lose some momentum and this and that. And we, we finally agreed that, hey, man, it's time to get serious about this thing. You know, the Lord's really put this on our heart to run a ministry and let's let's do this right. And so 
as we talked there, we all kind of said, all right, this is your job. And the job that I got was, Andy, you got to line us up some ranches. You know a lot of people. And <laughs> yeah. So I'm sitting there in a the blind all weekend with a kid. And, of course, we're talking. But then I'm praying about, man, Lord, where am I going to find six ranches to open up these hunts, you know? And so <laughs> I prayed about, <laughs> yeah, I, I don't even know how to do my job yet, you know? A lot of people want to say it's it was quite coincidental, but it was actually uh, really just kind of a divine meeting we get to a gas station, me and Joe pulling our little trailer and we park and uh, we're just sitting there and had four or five kids with us and the guy comes in the gas station. And a buddy and I were just traveling down 281 and I pulled in to get fuel. He says, hey man, what is this y'all doing? I think Joe started telling him about it. Now, what's this all about? And I uh, said, you know, it looks like you've got your hands full with all these kids. And so he started talking to me about what they did with Sights on Christ, taking you know, generally underprivileged uh, young men. Just so happened that I just, you know, kind of been searching for uh, some kind of missionary, missional kind of moves uh, to do with our ranch. And gave me his card, said, man, I got a ranch right down the road. And said, give me a call. Uh, I'd love to, you know, talk to you more about it. And I don't think Andy waited a day before he gave me a call. And, and that was about three years ago. And it's been an awesome experience. We met him at Evant, Texas at a gas station. And now he's one of our biggest donors. Right. Yeah. Opens up his ranch to us two or three times a year. Uh, has donated, a, told us he'd donate a hunt for any kind of raffle we do. And he comes to almost every one of our events. Right. Comes to every one of our hunts to be a part of it. And that to me says a lot about SOC and how much guys get out of it. Because David, he has plenty of things he could go do with his time. And, mm -hmm. and uh, so for him to, God to put that meeting together at that gas station and then him be as big a part of SOC as he is, it's incredible. You know, it's absolutely incredible. Similar experience in my life where I lost my father at a young age. He, I, I was 16 when he passed away. Um, and so I, kind of had a sense in my life of being, if you will, a spiritual orphan. Um, and, you know, I learned much later in life that I wasn't. I had a, I had a heavenly father, uh, but I didn't really know how to relate with him. And so one of the things that um, I hope that I can instill in some of these kids is they can always lean in on their heavenly father um, and learning to relate with him through his son, Jesus. And, uh, and just letting them know that there's hope. And now these kids that don't have that family home life are able to see it modeled in front of them and to see it modeled for Christ. And so, although their family may not be that way right now, they're all gonna have families and hopefully we break that cycle and they know, hey, I've seen this at Sights on Christ. I'm a believer, I'm in the word, I may not, had a family like that, but my family that I'm producing will follow the Lord and not be a product of your environment type situation. So I truly believe that's where God is taking this organization and I'm just very thankful for that.